continuation to my lecture series on a thorough perception on liquid dosage form today's lecture will be on the topic emulsions as already discussed in my preceding lectures the liquid dosage forms are one of the most important delivery systems of drugs as already discussed with context of types of liquid dosage form monophasic and biphasic and biphasic liquid dosage forms being solid in liquid type as already discussed for oral use suspensions and currently the topic in progress being liquid in liquid type biphasic dosage forms meant for oral use emulsions so as already discussed in the preceding lectures with respect to emulsions the learning outcomes out of the lecture series on biphasic liquid dosage form emulsions we have already covered definition of emulsions classification of emulsions emulsifying agent today's lecture would be on discussion with respect to test for identification of type of emulsions and method of preparation of emulsions in one more lecture which would be a successive lecture the discussion would be on stability problems and methods to overcome the stability problems so in continuation with the topic of test for identification of type of emulsions it is very important to have certain parameters to identify the type of emulsions as already discussed emulsions can be of oil in water type or water in oil type depending upon the proportion of continuous to discontinuous phase it becomes important to identify the type of emulsion which is ultimately formed for which we have exclusively certain identification tests now in order to understand the type of emulsion whether it is oil in water type or water in oil type the different tests which can be of aid in identifying are either miscibility test fluorescence test color test it is also called as dye test conductivity test and finally cobalt paper test the first one under the type of tests include miscibility test as the name itself signifies miscibility that is when an oil or water is added to an emulsion based upon whether the emulsion remains as one phase system or the liquid which is added goes into solution easily with the emulsion will help us to identify what type of emulsion it is if we need to talk about the principle of the test it can be simply understood as that when an emulsion is diluted with external phase its physical stability is maintained so this is the principle on which the miscibility test is based for example we have an emulsion system if water is added and the emulsion system is diluted on addition of water if there is no change in the phase the system appears to be homogeneous then it can be referred as oil in water type because water being the external phase and on addition of more amount of water the dilution parameter will be accommodated and the emulsion system will go on further diluting without showing phase separation or two different phases so as such one can conclude that the emulsion which was diluted with the external phase in this context being water it can be finally concluded that the given emulsion is oil in water type now on the contrary if an emulsion is diluted with oil and if that oil happens to be the internal phase or the discontinuous phase then on addition of oil the system will show separation of two phases so as the diagram represents the yellow part wherein the phase is changing and the oil will float over the system so this indicates that the system was oil in water and its dilution with oil is creating instability so miscibility test is the parameter to identify the top type of emulsion 
based on that dilution is accommodative provided it is diluted with the external phase. To understand the methodology of the same test as already mentioned the given emulsion system has to be diluted with water. We can also take oil as the dilution medium but since water is easily available one would prefer going with diluting it with water. On dilution with water if the emulsion does not show separation of phases then it can be concluded that the given system or the emulsion under study is oil in water type of emulsion. The second test which can be used for identification of emulsions are fluorescence test. As already aware of the term fluorescence it is basically emission of light of higher energy. So, there is a tendency that some oils show fluorescence property when they are observed under UV light. So, the diagram shows pictorial picture wherein some slides wherein a droplet of oil or the emulsion system is taken and if a suitable oil which has the property of show fluorescence is observed under the microscope you will be able to see the color the color due to fluorescence. So, based on this principle one can identify the given type of emulsion system. So, the methodology is emulsion which is to be identified is taken as a drop on a slide and it is exposed to UV light and observed under the microscope. Provided oil is discontinuous phase one can observe when seen under the microscope it appears as colored globules or colored droplet against uncolored background. So, when the droplets are scattered colored this indicates that it reflects discontinuous phase or the internal phase thereby one can come to the conclusion that oil is the internal phase hence the emulsion system can be referred as oil in water type. Now, on the contrary in case the entire background field appears colored with transparent bubbles or globules under the microscope it can be understood that oil becomes the external phase or the continuous phase and water which appears as colorless globules would be the discontinuous or the internal phase. In this context the emulsion can be referred as water in oil type. So, very simple procedure wherein based on the color of the internal or the external phase one can judge whether oil appears as internal medium or external medium respectively. Accordingly the system can be identified to be as oil in water type or water in oil type. The third test which can be used for identification of emulsions is dye test or as already mentioned it can also be synonymously called as color test. So, the picture shows two slides wherein in the first slide the background is colored and the discontinuous face is uncolored and the other slide is vice versa wherein the background is uncolored and the spots or the globules are colored. The principle on which the dye test is based or the color test is based depends upon whether the water phase or oil phase shows coloration provided when the emulsion is triturated with a water or an oil soluble coloring agent generally referred as dyes. Hence the name dye test. The procedure is very simple wherein in a mortar and pestle the emulsion preparation is triturated with a let us say oil soluble dye. Now, if we are taking an oil soluble dye and the emulsion is triturated with this oil soluble dye and one drop of this preparation is mounted on a slide and absorbed under a microscope there are two possibilities. If the internal phase appears colored as we have taken an oil soluble dye that means the internal phase is colored and that is because the oil has taken up the oil soluble dye. So, that indicates that the system is oil in water type because 
oil is the discontinuous phase and it is as observed under the microscope. Similarly, on the contrary, the second option is that the background appears to be totally colored because oil is becomes the continuous phase and the background appears to be more colored and with colorless droplets reflecting that it is a water in oil type of system. The same explanation will hold good in case when a water soluble dye is taken. So, based on the availability of the dye, the similar emulsion system can be mixed with the respective dye and based on the color whether taken by the internal phase or external phase, one can be judgmental about the type of emulsion. Hence, the name dye test or color test is identified with this particular test. The fourth test in the series is conductivity test. Now, as the diagram indicates, we need to create an electrical circuit and the principle on which this test is based is as simple as that water is a good conductor of electricity. Now, let us assume we have an emulsion wherein water appears to be the external phase and if we set up a circuit and if we pass the current and if the bulb glows, it indicates that the system is oil in water type because water being more in quantity and being a good conductor of electricity, it will help the bulb to glow. And on the same lines, if the bulb does not glow, then the system can be identified to be water in oil type because oil becomes the continuous phase and oil is a non-conductor of electricity. So, in order to understand the methodology, we need to have a pair of electrodes. The emulsion system should be taken in a beaker. Immerse this pair of electrodes in the emulsion system in a beaker and create a circuit with a lamp and an electric potential. So, under this instance, if the current is applied and if the lamp glows, as already mentioned, it indicates water as the continuous phase and the emulsion can be identified to be as oil in water type. So, this is based on the simple principle of good conductivity by water when current is passed. The last test which is used for identification of type of emulsion is cobalt paper test. Paper is treated with cobalt chloride and dried. Such a paper is referred as cobalt paper. Now, cobalt chloride has a tendency that when it is exposed to a moisture, because of its hygroscopic nature, the blue color of cobalt will become pink. So, based on this principle, this test is used as a test to identify the type of emulsion. So, first the cobalt paper has to be prepared and dried, which appears blue in color. Now, this blue strip of paper is dipped in the emulsion system for which we have to establish whether it is oil in water type or water in oil type. Now, if the cobalt paper is dipped in an emulsion system and the paper remains blue, that means the given system or the emulsion system is water in oil type because here oil is the external phase and the continuous phase and more in proportion compared to the internal phase. So, the cobalt paper will have limited exposure to moisture and it will retain its integrity and remain blue. The second option is that if the given emulsion system, if we dip the cobalt paper and cobalt paper turns pink. So, this can be giving us an indication that the given system is oil in water type because water being the external phase and more in proportion as compared to oil, it will have better exposure when cobalt paper is dipped in such a system because of exposure to more amount of moisture, cobalt paper will show a color change and turn pink. So, if the cobalt paper turns pink, it is very evident that the given system is oil in water type. So, this being a simple procedure and an important tool to identify whether the given type of emulsion is oil in water type or water in oil type. So, out of the 5 tests which we have discussed starting from miscibility test, 
fluorescence test, electrical conductivity test, dye test and cobalt paper test, one would become in a state to identify the given type of emulsion system. Now, this is the methodology for cobalt paper test as already discussed, a filter paper can be taken and dipped with chloride, cobalt chloride solution and exposed to dryness. Now, once it is dried, it turns blue in color because it takes up cobalt chloride on its surface. Now, the same paper which is dried is then treated with the emulsion which is provided. Change in color of the paper will indicate that it is oil in water type of emulsion because the paper will turn from blue to pink. This is with context of tests for identification of emulsions. The next parameter or the next learning outcome under the topic emulsion is with respect to method of preparation. As already discussed in the introduction lecture and discussing the definition of emulsions, emulsions are biphasic in nature wherein it has an oil phase and a water phase and because they are thermodynamically unstable, in order to temporarily stabilize the system, we add an emulsifying agent. Apart from them, we can also take additional additives to make the preparation more palatable provided if it is for internal use and more acceptable if it is meant for external use. So, basically whenever we are talking with context of methodology of preparation of emulsion, the first thing one should have in mind is what is the oil under study which has to be given orally because basically it is liquid in liquid system type and liquid in liquid water is highly palatable. So, water is not the matter of concern. The concern is to administer oil. Generally, oils are referred because of their medicinal value. As we already know, we have a big classification of oils. The oils can be from fixed oils category. An oil can be mineral oil having different medicinal or therapeutic values. To quote one example, if we have liquid paraffin, now liquid paraffin is an oil from mineral source and generally it is taken orally for its purgative action. So, patients suffering from constipation are generally recommended to go with such a preparation and as oils are bland in nature, it is totally unacceptable to take by oral route. To make the preparation more palatable, Emulsion comes as a rescue. So, while deciding the approach for the methodology for its preparation, one should always identify what is the oil under study and based on the type of oil to be administered orally, one should select the right emulsifying agent. Already the classification of emulsions have been discussed in my preceding lectures. So, the basic components to be decided in order to formulate an emulsion are what is the drug in case we have an additional drug which is oil soluble and for which we need to take an oil along or sometimes it might just have oil as the drug itself. So, the first criterion to be understood is whether we need to administer oil as such as a drug or oil becomes a vehicle to carry the drug which is of medicinal value. Apart from that, we need to select critically additives. Now, additives is a very broad term which includes of course water because emulsions are biphasic liquids. So, one phase being oil, the other being water and the selection of the correct emulsion or the emulsifying agent. So, keeping this in view, we need to approach with the methodology. So, first comes drug. Now, either the drug could be oil itself or it could be a different entity altogether. Now, if we are working on a drug which is oil soluble, we need to first select the suitable oil in which the drug is suitable. And at the same time, the ratio proportion of oil which we are going to consider and the nature of oil has to be critically judged because oils taken in excess quantity may have its own effect in the body. And secondly, it has to be palatable because it is oral route of administration and at the same time, the viscosity of the preparation also will be of concern. And as already mentioned, as a rule of thumb, 
Generally, when emulsions are intended for oral use, oil in water type of systems are preferred. The reason being, water being the continuous phase can be suitably colored, suitably flavored and the palatability or the patient acceptability can be improved. So, for that reason, always oral preparations, especially emulsion dosage form are preferred are oil in water type. So, here the ratio of oil should be very less compared to the ratio of water. So, selection of oil is a very very critical parameter in preparation of emulsions. Second criteria to be understood while selecting the drug is if it is a drug other than oil then it should be also understood that the drug should go into solution state in the oil. It should never remain insoluble because these are clear preparations, they are clear liquid preparations. So, this is a challenge for a formulation chemist to select the right drug if the route of administration is oral and the choice of delivery system is an emulsion. Apart from having selected drug, the next criteria for selection is oil phase. Now, as already mentioned, if it is the drug itself, then we have already understood that what are the parameters. But if we are selecting an oil in addition to a drug, which is the second component, then we need to understand what is the therapeutic value of the oil or is it meant as just a vehicle or a carrier of the drug. So, one has to be very clear to understand whether this is going to show an action on its own or it is just a medium. Now, if it is for auxiliary use, we also have to understand that this will help in either formation of soap. We have a typical example of lin turpentine liniment, though it is for external use, but sometimes this becomes an advantage wherein we can take in the chemical or the turpentine oil into a soap which is formed due to the presence of the oil. Sometimes the oil which is selected can also act as a carrier for oil soluble drug. So, as I already mentioned, the drug which is taken exclusively for medicinal purpose and the oil which is to be selected has to be with critical care that this is the vehicle to take in the drug in solution state and then proceed with the formulation of emulsion. Now, sometimes the oil which is selected may not necessarily have some function, it can only be added just for the purpose of emolliency or lubricants property. One typical example here I can give you is with respect to cold cream. Now, in cold cream the oil phase is only for emolliency. Of course, it is useful for broken skin and hydrating the skin, but otherwise from cosmetic point of view it is just added for providing emollient property in the preparation. So, having understood the criteria of selecting the drug and the oil phase, we also need to understand that sometimes the oil phase which is selected can have therapeutic value. So, we can quote some typical examples like turpentine oil. I just mentioned turpentine liniment as the example. Now, liniments are also emulsion systems, the only difference being that they are meant for external use. Emulsions are meant for internal use. The same system when they are intended for external use, we refer them as liniments. So, turpentine oil liniment is a very popular preparation wherein turpentine oil is the drug and a liniment is made wherein the oil which is taken for soap formation. Other examples we have under therapeutic value potential are benzyl benzoate, we also can incorporate fish oils and again a classical example is liquid paraffin which is for purgative action, it is a mineral oil. Castor oil is also given orally, arachis oil, it is an edible oil. Sometimes even we can administer soya bean oil or sunflower oil, all these come under edible category. We also have choice with oil phases such as oils for auxiliary use. Examples, it could be oleic acid. Arrakis oil is a common example whether with therapeutic value or auxiliary use. Sometimes we can also go with sesame oil, peanut oil or cottonseed oil. Thank you.